This is the Horse Radio Network. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. This is episode 531 of the Stable Scoop Show. The Horse Radio Network's Equestrian Roundtable Show in coordination with American Horse Publications. Our sponsor this episode is Kemen Equine. I am Glenda Geek, founder of the Horse Radio Network and host of Horses in the Morning. Now the longest running daily horse podcast in the world, and we're happy to say the longest running independent daily podcast in the world. Uh, welcome back to the Equestrian Roundtable, and we are excited to partner with American Horse Publications. And usually on this show, we'll have one or two of the representatives, journalists from American Horse Publications. That's the Association of Journalists in the Horse World. But the reason we don't tonight is because they're all flying to Lexington. So tomorrow, we're all flying into Lexington. I'm going to, and it's our annual conference there. So it's going to be at the Marriott Griffin Gate, right down the street from the horse park. And we're all excited to get together again this year uh, and hang out at the Marriott. So I'm really looking forward. There'll be about six hosts, I think, from the various shows in the Horse Radio Network. So podcasting will be well represented. When I first started going there, I was the only podcast host at the whole place. Nobody knew what a podcast was. So I'm happy to say that that's not the case anymore. There's a lot of podcast hosts. So I'll be your host and moderator tonight. Uh, I have opinions about things, but uh, we, I try and back off a little bit and let the panelists talk. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, welcome to the show. This is the first podcast that we're doing that's all live in addition to recorded. So if you miss any part of it tonight, you'll find the recorded on tomorrow's Stable Scoop episode feed and also on the Auditor feed as well. Now, one of our one of our panelists tonight hasn't made it yet, so we're hoping that she makes it. I don't know if she had an emergency with the horses or what's going on, but we're hoping that she she arrives here at some point tonight. So we're going to do it anyway, and we have two panelists that have shown up, and they're both auditors of ours. Actually, all three are. And what that means is they're super fans of the Horse Radio Network. They actually pay a little bit every month to be an auditor to become a super fan. And they join us in our our super secret auditor room, which is one of the most supportive communities in the horse world. And I asked them to do an all auditor episode, an all listener episode tonight, and they were kind enough to volunteer. So the first one up has been an auditor probably for the shortest period of time of anybody tonight. And that's Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Glenn. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm well. So just housekeeping. It's my anniversary today. And if I if you can hear my husband talking in the background on the phone, I'm not allowed to yell at him, but just let me know and I'll <laughs> give him the I'm gonna kill you. Get off the phone. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Yeah. How many years is it? Uh we've been married for nine years. And in typical horse lady fashion, I was like, I have a horse thing to do, so we'll we'll celebrate later. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, this you know you can get away with that after nine years because yeah. you know yeah you made it through seven you're good now yep, 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 yep. <laughs> somebody remembered though he remembered yep yeah okay well we'll forgive you so do you have a horse I do I have a nine year old off the track thoroughbred gilding his name is Mach five um, he wasn't a great race horse he only won a couple races and that was good for me because I got him but I've only had him for about a year. Um, and I was actually horseless. I didn't own a horse for over 10 years because my husband's active duty military. And that actually kind of made me think of one of the topics for tonight was like how to save money because it's a little bit of sicker shock going from not owning a horse. The last time I'd owned a horse was over 10 years ago when things were, I don't know if you know, but like 10 years ago, things were way cheaper. <laughs> they were. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's go ahead. And your topic tonight is going to be tips for affording horses uh, when, when you know you're when things are tight, right? So yes. we're gonna we're gonna talk about that tonight. And is your horse what? What do you call him around the barn? Do you call him? I just call him Mock. Mock, <laughs> I like <Yep>. that. <laughs> and where do it's you live? Different. 
Um, I live in Central Texas, so I'm about an hour north of Austin, and I board my horse at a barn that's about 30 minutes from here. So, Is it English Western Barn, a little bit of it's everything? A, it's a total Western Barn. I'm the only one that rides English there, but I have participated in some of the... They have the Western play days with like the barrels and the pole bending and all that. And well, that's fun, I'm though. I'm very happy to report that I totally did that in my English saddle, and it was super fun, even though we like trotted the barrels <laughs> for the most part, because I was like, I ain't falling off. <laughs> But yeah, it's a Western barn, but they're very welcoming and like I'm the entertainment for them because it's yeah. so different. So. <laughs> You're the English girl. Do you wear mm-hmm. a helmet? That would be awful. I uh, do wear a helmet and I Are actually, you the only one? Yes. I wear yes. a helmet and the boots and you know, the whole thing and I actually like wear an air vest a lot of times when I'm jumping. So they're extra kind of like, okay, your horse <laughs> must be insane, lady. You're like ready for war. <laughs> That's but. funny. <laughs> you probably have the only helmet and air vest in the county, actually. Probably. <laughs> well, and thank you also. You're our newest auditor. I think one of the newest auditors that we have. So thank yeah. you for that. And thank you for listening. We appreciate that. Yeah, too. it's been it's been fun. It's totally worth it. I've never been an auditor or done Patreon or anything before. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And it's been really fun to have the extra exclusive content and get to stay on past the normal podcast time. So. Good. You figured that out. Good. Good yep. for you. Yep. All right. <laughs> yep. Good. All right. Next up, we have uh, Jennifer with us. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. How are you? Good. So where are you at, Jennifer? Um, I am just a little bit north of Atlanta, in Georgia. Okay. You're in Jamie's old territory there. Yeah. Whenever uh, she talks about it, I know exactly where she's talking about. And you actually ha- rode with my wife in an endurance ride at one point, didn't you? I did. We both rode together down at Macaulay Farms in Florida, and we were doing, I think we did a limited distance, um, but we were both uh, what they call green beans, and we just stuck together, uh, babysat each other, and made it through the ride really well. We had fun. I have to tell her you're on tonight. I have to tell her that (laughs) that you're joining us tonight. So obviously, you're an endurance rider, right? Um, I'm a limited endurance rider. Uh, People like Karen, I'm not sure, Karen Chatton, I'm not sure they really consider me an endurance rider. But I think riding for 25 miles is a long way. I think she considers you an endurance rider. <laughs> Anybody who rides for 25 miles is considered an endurance rider in my book. It's far enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's far enough for Jennifer, too. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, thank you for putting up with her horse, uh, Nigel, during that time. Because uh, he he's a handful when it comes he's to special. endurance. <laughs> yeah, he's special. He's That's special. Right. He, 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 there, there are things in the woods that, that bother him. Uh, he has yes. some fears. <laughs> yes. The fact that she sits that and well, she was totally exhausted. I remember she was totally exhausted after that. Well, it's not yes. just the ride. It's the camping with the horse. It's the yeah. I mean, it, it's a huge production. It is. It is to endurance rides a commitment, actually. Mm-hmm. It really, it really is, is a commitment. But it's fun. Well, good. Well, you have actually, I think we're going to do uh, Alicia's topic, but Jennifer, your topic came, we're going to do second. Uh, okay. And that is what has my horse taught me? And I would love to get the live listeners feedback on that when we get to that topic too, because I think everybody's going to have a little bit of a different answer. I think some things will be the same for everybody. And then there'll be some things that are different for everybody. But I'm anxious to hear that because I don't think it's a topic that we've covered before. So thank you for bringing that to the table. But we're going to get started. Alicia, tell us about your topic. What did you want to talk about tonight? So my topic was one that's pretty relevant to me. Like I said, I've only, I was kind of out of horse, not out of horses. I didn't own my own horse for the last about 10 years until uh, more recently. And so it's made me a lot more conscious of like how much horses cost and things you can kind of do to save money and then how it's changed or how I kind of alter things I used to do. Like I used to get my hair done and my nails and go get massages and do all these things, you know, and now I'm like, well, you know, (laughs) she is not a frilly girl anymore. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm just dye my own hair, whatever. So yeah, just, um, I, I guess I can just jump right into what the ideas that I had about that. And then you guys can. Can I ask you a question first? Yes. yes. Uh, did you tell your husband how expensive that saddle was that's behind you over there? Yes, he knew. So <laughs> funny story about that is that I was, like I said, the last 10 years, he's in the military. We're moving around. I was catching exercise, riding a million different horses for people, which is free. Um, and so I was like last spring, I was like, I, you know, I deserve this like awesome saddle because I don't have a horse. You know, I want to take this nice saddle to all these barns I'm catch riding at and I bought it. And then 
maybe two months later, <laughs> I bought my horse that I said I wasn't going to buy until we had a farm. So yeah, he, he knew about it, but. Okay. Just checking. All right, go ahead. <laughs> but, oh, so that, that brings me into the first part is the buy and sell. Like I think most equestrians are kind of on board with this, but the use tack and apparel, like, you know, for people, unless you're a professional, but I think a lot of the listeners are kind of like me where they have a horse for a hobby and it's fun, you know? And so we know horses take a lot of time and money and, um, I always try to tell as many people as I can when they're like, Hey, where do you get breeches from? Or where do you get this or that? Obviously like it depends on what you're looking for. And I always recommend buying a helmet new and things like that, but there's a huge market for buying and selling like saddles, breeches. I mean, I don't think I have very many new horse related items. And so I've saved a lot of money um, by using like Facebook groups, like English tack trader, English riding apparel, you can use Poshmark, Craigslist, like pretty much any like buy and sell type group. Um, I actually had one of the auditors, I commented like, I'm looking for a saddle bag. I just looking for recommendations. And someone's like, I've got one I'll sell you. And I actually ended up buying it from her and knew they're like 80 bucks. But from her, I got it for 30. So just stuff like that, where it takes a little bit of time, you know, but um, taking advantage of buying and selling you stuff. Um, and then virtual horse shows, which is something that was kind of new to me, but I think kind of got bigger during COVID. I think it was um, new to everybody. I, it really yeah. wasn't a thing before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I actually, a lot of the ones, at least where I live in central Texas, they are advertising them that they'll benefit like a horse rescue or a charity or something where like, oh, pay seven to 10 bucks for a class and you can actually get feedback from an actual judge and you can get ribbons. You just have to record yourself. So, I mean, that's going to cost the fraction of an actual, like, hauling to a horse show and paying all the fees and all that stuff. So, just kind of thinking outside the box if you want to have the horse show experience but don't want to blow hundreds of dollars (laughs) in one day. Um, And then uh, just networking. That's been the best thing for me is, like, whether you're trying to buy a horse or figure out the best cost for everything is like networking is such an important thing in the equestrian industry to me is that if you can find a friend like say you want to try five different bits on your horse you could you know put a post out or call your friends and be like hey does anyone have this blah 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 xyz bit instead of dropping a bunch of money and not being able to return it or whatever so just like using the resources that you know we have out there but might not think about was a big deal for me and saving some money and can't. if you're watching live, post in there. What ha- I like the question. I posted it. Just post in the auto room too. So by the end of the night, we'll go over the answers. But uh, if what have you given up to ride your horses? So you said you gave up all the pretty girl frilly things, right? Yeah, like yeah. getting nicer outfits or you know the the nice stuff for me. Less, a little less, like going out to eat. Uh, I got an espresso, like you know, one of those at home espresso machines because I had a pretty bad. I used to live in the Pacific Northwest and like there's coffee shops on every corner. I don't know about everywhere else, but the coffee addiction of like going and spending five bucks or more a day was bad. And so when I totaled that up, I like just went out and bought an espresso and that pays your um, board now. Uh. uh, Not quite, but I mean, it was hundreds (laughs) of dollars a month. So it puts a good little dent in it. Just stuff like that where, I mean, maybe some people can't live without it, but for me, I was like, you know, I'd rather like, have a new saddle pad or like pay my horse board than, you know, have all the nice like foo-foo stuff. But. All right. Well, actually we got an answer already. Rachel said, uh, I said, is there something you give up to have horses? And she said, having money. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, how about you? Well, I was just thinking, um, I do endurance riding and since I've started it, my husband and I really haven't gone on a vacation. Our vacation is when I load him up in the gooseneck, which by the way, has no water. And he, but I did buy him his own bucket. Um, we we go to the endurance rides. Those are our vacations, and, you know, and that's a weekend camping in the mud with a horse. Sounds um, but lovely. But that's what we gave up. Does he yeah. like it, though? Yeah. <laughs> he likes me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he enjoys the pony. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been together? Let me, let me ask We've that. We've been married like 30 years. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. He, you know, at this point. At but no, point, we yeah. really we haven't been on a vacation since I started this. We haven't gone anywhere except to Macaulay or another ride in the southeast. It's really kind of sad. 
I mean, that's a, <laughs> it, well, it could, I was going to say it could be a good point. Cause if you're going to interesting places, if you're able to leave your horse, I guess mm-hmm. you could totally like, Oh, go hiking somewhere here. Or, like go. No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not sad for me. I think it's the best thing ever. And oh, I love yeah. it. And the weekends are my favorite. I think it might be a little sad for him, but he he's game. He comes along. We have fun. I think yeah. I have fun. <laughs> Like, like I said, a we true have horse one. woman. <laughs> we have one in a couple of weeks. We've already started gathering our stuff. You know, we have fun. I mean, I have fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pony has fun. It's all good. But that That's was fun. one thing that we gave up. But like you were saying, um, networking, and you mentioned uh, reaching out to the auditors. I have found that to be so helpful. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm looking for something specific, mm-hmm. and I know someone was selling some um, used. Uh, uh, equestrian attire and I got it because oh my gosh it was such a deal um, but she ended up sending me other stuff she found you know the the auditors are a great resource for finding stuff and giving you feedback on what they've used and what has worked and what hasn't worked so you don't waste as much money um, trying yeah. everything or like for showing like I I'm don't really have the desire to like show where I'd have to wear a show coat, but say if I did, or back when I was fox hunting in Georgia, like borrowing, if it's just something like once or twice a year or whatever, like just trying to borrow like items like show coats or kind of some of the stuff that's like a little more high end, but you might not need it that much. And then you're talking about going to endurance rides. One of the things I thought of too, is I've always tried to, it might be kind of harder, but, um, carpooling horse pooling like if you're gonna go and trying to get a buddy to haul with you and like split the fuel bill but I don't know you know how hard or easy that is to find like for um, endurance because that's a little bit more specific you know it there there are more of us than you think um I think we hide out because people think we're weird but we do <laughs> we do haul together oh that's um, awesome yeah it's it's there's a it's there are more of us than you think I'll just leave it at that yeah All right. I got some more answers here from the auditors. Uh, So the question again was, is there something you give up to have horses? Uh, Jill says a luxury car and a social life of any kind. You know, that we didn't talk about. We were talking about monetary things, but that is something that goes too, right? Is is, uh, you may have had a big, especially you in the military. Sometimes the military families can have a big social life because they hang out with other military families, right? Um, And that especially officers, I think probably uh, mm-hmm. more so. And that kind of goes away because you're spending all your time with the horse. You'd rather be with the horse than at yeah, a party. Every but night. For me, like um, I can't wait to have our own horse place, but the boarding aspect for me, because I do board, um, I get, that's like my social life because oh, I true. work from home. Yeah. So I see no one except my dog or my husband. Yeah, I know that the feeling. Time. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little nice. Sometimes you're like, Oh, other humans, like how do I interact? But, the boarding kind of helps with the um the social aspect of it. But um yeah, it'll definitely be cheaper when well, theoretically cheaper when we have a place, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you think Let's it keep will keep saying that. <laughs> you just have to fix things and pay for that then at that mm-hmm. point. Uh, 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 Nancy says going on vacation. So there's a couple going on vacations, by the way. Mm-hmm. So Jennifer, you're not the only one. Uh, Laura says traveling more than a few times a year. Uh, Allison says a brand new luxury apartment to pay board on two horses. I had to move into a slum. Yeah. Ended up with ended up with bed bugs too. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's awful. <laughs> that is awful. That I'm, is sorry, really I'm bad. sorry we're laughing, but that's awful. Um, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting that sentence right there. Uh, Mandy said, I'll see Mandy tomorrow. Uh, she said, basically anything I could buy that's nice. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. And we'll see. We'll have more of those answers before the night's done. And also our third panelist might be joining us here uh, very shortly. So Tara might be popping in. She was delayed getting to us. Let's take a break for our sponsor for this particular episode. And then we're going to come back. And hopefully Tara will be here and we'll have two more topics we'll cover before the night's done. But please do, if you're watching live, uh, post in there in the comment section below. What, What do you give up to have your horses? 
Last year, the inaugural Equa Summit attracted hundreds of attendees as a premier virtual event for horse enthusiasts interested in gut health and stress solutions. The second annual Equa Summit is right around the corner, taking place May 25th and 26th. Join us as experts from the industry and academia tackle important equine health issues such as leaky gut syndrome, heat stress, the connection between behavior and the gut, fecal water syndrome, and other hot health and nutrition topics. Whether you're a roper, racer, farrier, veterinarian, hobbyist, or beyond, you'll find Equisummit has something for you. Don't let this opportunity ride away. Reserve your free spot today by visiting attendequisummit.com. The virtual event goes live May 25th and 26th. Register for free today. Go to attendequisummit.com. And we thank uh, Kevin Equine for being a sponsor here for a very long time on the Horse Radio Network. Let me give me one second here, guys, to get Tara this link so that she can get in so we can bring her in here. Well, while you're doing yeah. that, I can I can also incriminate myself and say that because my husband's watching this, when I got my horse, he also sold his nice bass boat. Because we couldn't afford to have both things, so now he he cries. You better never screw up anything ever again. Ooh, that's yeah. bad. Yeah. He is gonna hold that over your head for life. Every every day. Oh. He, every day. Yeah. he hasn't been fishing since, and it's all your fault. Yep. <laughs> God, he's got to love you. He's a good one. He's yeah. a keeper. Yeah. Cheaper to keeper, she- I guess. <laughs> Does he help with the horse? Does he go out to the barn? Yeah, he's you? he's a horse guy. We actually met through horses. He was the hay delivery oh. boy at my mom's barn when I was a Oh, teenager. really? Yeah. Wow. All right. Let's add Tara in here. Tara, you're with us. Hi. You're on the air, by the way. We're live. Yes. You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks for thanks for jumping in. I hope everything's okay with the ponies. It's the puppies. Oh, <laughs> she has about 10 of them, so it could be any one of them. Well, so, I had a foster have six puppies on Monday. Oh, no. So now you have about 20 dogs. 15. 15. <laughs> oh, Jennifer's over there yelling, she has puppies. She has puppies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Tara, tell everybody a little bit. You do fox hunting and what else down there in Texas? Trail ride, show hunters, Um it's kind of, I have a baby ch- chinkatique pony who will be starting next spring-ish. He's you bought that small. one at the auction, right? Mm-hmm. Online. Yeah. The first year they did it in 2020. Yeah, that's cool. And how and, is the chinkatique? What's the attitude like with that little pony? It's funny. He's been really easy until now. He's pretty sassy. Mm, um, teenager now. <laughs> yes. Terrible twos, definitely. Uh, he's been really easy, though. Easy to train. Gets on the trailer. I lead him around. He tries to run away. Then he stops. Um, yeah, he's he he reminds me a lot of you can kind of see this picture, that one. Ooh, mm-hmm. The horse behind me turned twenty nine yesterday. Um, he is a quarter horse, and they they remind me a lot of each other. Well, happy birthday to the quarter horse! Thanks. Twenty nine. That's good. And I've had him since he was an embryo. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let's let's we did the first question already. Okay. Um, so we're going to go into your question next. So tell us what you wanted to talk about. Which one did you pick? The um, I picked uh, how to create unity in the horse world. Yeah. So we th- obviously Kentucky Derby always makes one think of this, and um, yeah, this is timely right now. Well, and not to belabor my background too much, but like I grew up showing quarter horses on ranches in eastern Montana. My mom's husband was a PRCA saddle bronc rider. Um, my dad rode cutting horses. I show you stuff, you know, a, a circuit hunters now. And it, we all talk about it a lot on the podcast that there's an ongoing issue with um, people understanding horse welfare and trying to create unity amongst all horse people to address and combat it. Because I would hate for horse sports to go away just because people who are not knowledgeable think it's animal abuse. And so I just kind of wanted to chat about how do we unify if possible. And I think this kind of tickles a little bit, the conversation about certifications for trainers. Um, 
to address the horse welfare and educating the public. Because really horse racing and rodeo probably have the biggest stage. Definitely. There's no question about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, rodeo, because of the nature of rodeo, it doesn't always look pleasant, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's something that that we have to take into consideration. And racing, I mean, you know, it's had its issues in the past. Um, so what do you guys think? Uh, any comments there, Alicia, Jennifer? Um, I do. I, I think in this issue, the the animal rights activists are doing a better job than we are. They get out there, they're <laughs> vocal, they're showing up, they're writing to the powers that be. They even show up at our county commissioners, you know, meetings around here when we're talking about uh, trail availability. And, and we, maybe because we're so busy at the barn, we're kind of quiet. We're not there. We're not showing up. So our voices aren't being heard. And, and, and we don't get the opportunity to share how happy our, our little critters are and, and, you know, that we are taking care of them. So there is an opportunity that I think we need to uh, take advantage of, of being more vocal, being more visible um, and, and trying to counteract what they're saying, not just letting it go and ignoring it, hoping it doesn't affect us because it will. Mm -hmm. And uh, piggybacking kind of off what Jennifer was saying, my first thought when I saw that question was education, but it's really hard like say just me, I'm like, I ride horse, my horse on the weekends. Not like I'm probably going to go out and champion for all, you know, horse owners in the world. But I was trying to think of what is like, even from the tiniest micro view that like as horse owners we could do. And the first thing that popped in my mind was, you know, I use Instagram. I have a public Instagram and like social media and stuff. I guess you could put information in your post. Cause I've had people like, especially when I used to cap in and fox hunt, it was all humane stuff, but then for that one, people didn't know. So if I put, hey, no animals were harmed, or like if you post a video or picture of you doing something with your horse, I mean, everyone can think ever, anything's abuse, but you could say, hey, like this is why I did this this way, if you care to. I mean, so that's like the tiniest way you could do something, which I don't know if that would really help, but just a thought, I guess. Whoever Tara, what are your thoughts on your own topic? I would like to see more of the big associations, like I mentioned, AQHA, PRCA, USEF, um, you know, the bigger breeds, whatnot. I, I think that they should, that should be a part of their leadership roles is that I, I think that they should try to coordinate with one another to do the things Pete is doing, to have people in Washington to, and I think some of them do to an extent, but I feel like to have a bigger voice, it needs to be more consolidated. Um, and not, I feel like growing up and having done so many different kinds of riding, it's a lot of, oh, well, the dressage people do that. And, oh, well, rodeo people are feral. And, oh, you know, we need to be more respectful towards one another, learning about each other's sports and how to have a unified voice to protect our, you know, our horses and our livelihoods with what we do and our hobbies. <laughs> But it is the mission statement of the Horse Radio Network, uniting the horse world one show at a time, right? That has been our goal, especially with horses in the morning, is to talk a little bit about everything, you know. Um, and, you know, there is the Horse Council. The American Horse Council is the lobbying group in Washington. But there's like three people or two right. people that work there, right? So uh, there are various horse councils around the United States that are supposed to lobby in the state, but a lot of them are inactive and it's not. Yes. If the associations all had to contribute and make that more financially feasible to do on a bigger scale, I think that would be a good thing. And you're when right. You that at, Yeah. You look ahead. at the money that, that USEF, that um, AQHA, that NRHA, NCHA, PRCA, look at the money those organizations bring in. They can afford it. Yeah. Yeah. And if they were all contributing toward that one thing, that that lobbying effort, you're right. And, you know, Marty Irby, we've had him on the show many mm -hmm. times and he's the one out there, but he's going from another angle. He's right. like, let's clean it up. So we give PETA less ammunition. Right. Jennifer, I love that your quote, by the way, I'm stealing that, um, you know, because they're doing a better job. You know, yeah. they're doing a better job than we are. I'd never heard it put that way before. But we, that's what Marty's point is. Let's let's clean this up. Let's clean up the most visible one, racing, right? right. 
um, and let's get the drugs out and let's take the whips away. And let's do all the things that are making racing look bad to to the average person. Uh, and let's clean it up. And that's his approach. His approach is a little different than let's lobby for, you know, and and just make it so that we don't pass laws that hurt us. Let's make it so that they don't have to pass laws that hurt us. Right. right. So, I, you know, I think that that's a, that's an approach that there are very few people taking, though. Right. Because that that does involve making waves. Right. And you look at the PRCA, calf roping has been taking a beating for years and it looks awful. You've got these cute little baby calves that this guy ropes and then he ties. I got to admit, it's one, it's one that makes me cringe. <laughs> but, I mean, I grew up in a ranch family, so I saw it in real life and what it was used for. And a kid from my hometown won the PRCA a couple of years ago, the NFR. But I mean, they're constantly fighting that with that sport specifically. And so I, I think at some point they're just going to have to let it go. Yeah. And, you know, when you watch the Bucking Bronx and the bull riding, then you go, OK, well, this animal has a fair, fair advantage here. And you're not feeling bad for the animal at that no. point. Right. So, no, the, uh, like the Saddle Bronx and the bareback horses have the best horse lives on the planet, in my opinion. Yeah. And they're treated very well. They're expensive. I was I mean, they shocked for eight seconds and then they eat. Yeah. And you know what? They're, they, I was shocked at how much they go for. Yeah. It's not cheap to have a Bucking Bronx that's any good. Yeah. Any other thoughts, Alicia? Um, it's just such a hard, <laughs> not really, because when I read that topic, I'm like, that is such a, you know, can of worms because it's so subjective to what each person thinks is abuse. Like one person could think that just owning a horse is abusive, right? Like pure, which a lot of people do. They're like, set them free. You're horrible. Mm -hmm. And then other people don't care if it's all the way up to like the big lick stuff or whatever. So it's such a, I mean... And to me, it's a little bit of a slippery slope of like, well, let's stop doing, I I obviously agree, don't do horse abuse. Don't do like the big lick right. stuff and beat the crap out of horses. But if you then start saying, well, you can't have a whip or you, well, then it might be, you can't have a rope and you can't have, you have to ride bridalists. Like, I, I don't know. It's like so hard to figure out like rules, but I definitely agree for advocating for equestrians. Like, Hey, here's all the good and how spoiled most horses are under a responsible person and, you know, all the good um, that needs to be highlighted and keeping trails open. I think Jennifer was saying is a big one. And I know there's organizations like backcountry horsemen and like most fox hunting groups, but I don't know about other ones that do endurance people do the trail or land use advocating Jennifer, yeah. you know, it's part of our um, organization, the AERC, oh, awesome. but we rely okay. a lot on the backcountry horsemen. And also we have formed an, uh, depending upon where you are, an uneasy alliance with the um, mountain bikers because mm. we use a lot of the same trails. Now, okay. Jennifer's horse, Nigel, probably wouldn't do well sharing a trail with mountain bikers. Actually, he's gotten much better now because the trails we ride on by the boarding stables are full of yep. mountain bikers. So, mm. uh, But it, it honestly, it works pretty well. And, you know, if you if we can keep aligning with people where we have some of the same needs, smart, I think yeah. that I think that helps. Um, but I agree with Tara that we have to, the organizations have to step up because we as individuals can do local things. Mm -hmm. um, I have some trails where I'm going out to train and I'm going out to train far and I'm just going to ride. But when I'm just taking it easy, um, I live near uh, the most visited, uh, what is it called? Most visited battlefield in America. And it's Kennesaw Mountain. Um, and it's a Civil War uh, battle site. And when I ride there and it's like an eight to 12 mile loop, it takes me forever because every mile I'm stopping because there's some toddler or some six year old who's never seen a horse before, you know, and they're patting my horse and they're, you know, feeding her a carrot. And then we go another mile. No, here's someone else. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, so that we can continue to, to share trails, you have to do you have to be an ambassador. You have to be friendly and let them let them pet the horse. Let them sniff the horse. Let them do these things so that we have the opportunities and they see that the horse is happy and not suffering and having an okay time. Yeah, you know, we talk about it on the show a lot, this particular topic. And, and one of the things is we just have to do better as a whole, right? We, we have to be better in our own worlds. And people see that. People see what you're doing and, you know, they see... You know, in our case, we're talking to tens of thousands of people, and that's that makes we have a little big 
a little bigger platform. But I think Jamie doing the Monty Roberts stuff has really changed. And a lot of people have said they've changed from listening to the show. So we're, we're helping a little bit, but you're always going to have in every discipline, every time somebody picks on a discipline, I have to remind everybody that every discipline has the bad apples. Every group everywhere doing whatever has bad apples, whether you show dogs or you do, I don't care what it is, right? You're in soccer, you're in football, I don't care. You have the bad apples. We're not going to get rid of them. So we just have to do better as a whole so that they're less visible, right? And and that's what it's it's just, uh, I think Tara said it, it's a learning thing over a period of time. And I think it has gotten better. I think horsemanship as a whole, you guys can disagree with this, but I think horsemanship as a whole over the last 30 years since I met Jennifer and got into the horse world has gotten better. And there, people are more aware of the teachings of Amante Roberts and and natural horsemanship and all of that. That's we're much more aware of that than we were 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alicia wasn't even born yet, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I'll be 35 on Saturday. So. Okay. You were five. Yes. <laughs> I remember Glenn. I was there. It's okay. Better. Good. Thanks, Jennifer. I, re- I appreciate the backup on that one. <laughs> All right. Very good. Good topic there, Tara. Good topic. And it's a topic we have to keep addressing yeah. and we have to keep looking at. And we we all do. Or it is going to go away. We've said that for 3,000 episodes on Horses in the Morning. This is a slippery slope. It's a snowball going down the hill. And since we started the show and started preaching that, the snowball has been rolling down the hill. Right. Pete is getting more traction. The first sport to go will probably be some kind of the rodeo sports will go. And then then they'll go then racing, they'll go after racing harder, and then eventing will be next. And you know, it's just gonna go fox hunting has always been a target. Uh but that was more about the foxes than the horses, you know. So uh but then right, Tara? Then they went to okay, we're gonna not hunt foxes anymore. We're gonna do drag hunts. Then it became about the horses. Well, so, I think fox hunting they in my opinion, I don't think that there's a lot of unity amongst the different fox hunts. Cause I've hunted with, I don't know, 10 different hunts and I've never drag hunted. Mm, there you go. So that tells yeah. you something. Um, Oh, of course, Jennifer Fox hunted for a long time, and they very seldom ever caught anything. So, I right, mean, yeah, right. And, <laughs> so, and yeah, there's that's a whole separate conversation. Yeah, but yeah, I it think is, but... the fox hunting group is kind of a little bit. I think they need to be more straightforward to do a service to their sport about yeah. what's happening. And we could probably say that about every sport. Yeah, we really could. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Absolutely. Well, Glenn, that first sport's already gone away. What was the Olympic sport? The pen pentathlon. Okay, in my opinion, yeah, that should have went away. That was yeah, just but it's, a, it, 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 that was like on. Glenn going out and doing that was like me <laughs> riding a horse at the Olympics. All right, it yeah. was horrible. I agree. <laughs> But they got rid of it. Disaster. Yeah. Because got rid of it. because the athletes didn't care about it. That's why it was a disaster. If they had cared about it, it would have been fine. But they didn't care. They didn't care. I, I think it was the visual of that person just you know wailing away on that horse. Oh, and then just watching the others ride made me sick too. I'm sorry, that one should have went away. I'm all for that gone. one going away. <laughs> Oh, okay. They're, they're doing an <laughs> obstacle sure course. Now. sports you want to go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go next to the third topic. And I really like this topic because I think it's something that everybody can answer. And, and those watching live, I want you to answer. Uh, by the way, before we do that, do you want to hear some more of the things people have given up to do horses? So this was Alicia's, Tara, this was Alicia's topic earlier, and I asked in the auditor room what people gave up. Uh, Paige said hair color, cable, and the list goes on. So second vote for hair color. Uh, it, Mandy, or uh, <laughs> Debbie says a sound body. Yeah, that's true, especially if you've been a venter for a while. Chelsea says relationships. Um, <laughs> a traveling, keeping anything clean. I like this one, Lori. Money, living in civilization, and going away for more than two days at a time, and a clean house. I don't know that your houses were ever clean if you're a horse girl. I'm just saying. Uh, Melanie says nails, eyelashes, extensions, and expensive vacations. You know, uh, nails, hair color, getting your hair done, that's all a big popular one here. Apparently, horse women just have terrible hair and rotten nails. Yeah. That's that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, Summer it, it, says time. Well, that's an interesting answer, too. You do give up a lot of time. Yeah. Um, time to get there, time to be with them, and time to deal with all their stuff. 
That's so true of horses. Um, uh, yeah, and time is another one that that Susanna said, and I didn't thought about time, but yeah, that is a that is a big one. You give up when you have horses. It's actually the thing that bothers us most a, as new horse boyfriends and horse husbands is the amount of time we don't get when you deal with the horses. So that is one of the the things that bothers us the most at the beginning, and then after a while, you just learn to deal with it. But it takes a couple of years to get over that one. All right, the third one. This was Jennifer, right? You brought this one to the table. So tell us about it. Well, I was thinking uh, about all that my horse has taught me. I'm I'm a, one of those re-riders. I rode as a kid and then took a break from the time I was 16 until I was 54. Um, that's a huge break. And what what I've learned the second time around, um, and some of it, you know, is very superficial and very easy. I, I can back a horse trailer, whether it is a, a gooseneck or a, just a hitch. I can back it. Now, my gooseneck, the fenders are off on the right side, and there is a running board that's a little wacky jawed where I run over a boulder, but I can back it. Um, I've learned the the importance, and and I'm I'm an older person of core strength. You know, my horse has taught me that because when she's throwing me around. If I can pull myself up, life is a lot better. Um, I was never a camper. I'm a Marriott girl. I like my Marriott brand of hotel. Uh, but since I've had my horse, I'm camping. And I have my own my own bucket, and I use it for things I never thought I'd use a bucket for. <laughs> and, and that is definitely a result of my horse. So, you know, those are the easy ones. And then, you, you know, then I start really thinking – and what my horse has really taught me is, a, is about myself. Uh, the horses are a mirror, I think, to ourselves. Um, and the first one they teach you is humility. Um, when I got back on a horse at 54, it didn't take me more than 30 minutes to realize that I wasn't the rider I was when I was 16. You know, um, And they will humble you fast. I learned that I'm braver than I thought I was. Um, I, I uh, get lost going to Publix. Yet I will set out on a 25, 30 mile ride without a map, just following ribbons and have faith that I'll find my way back. Let me make um, a note for Jennifer not to ride with you on a ride. <laughs> I'm horrible. My horse finds her way back. <laughs> um, you know, and we ride on trails that that have I live up in the mountains of Georgia that have drop offs and and we see critters out in the woods. And I'm definitely afraid of snakes. Yet I'm out there. I'm braver than I thought I was. Um, and even though I think Glenn, I think you and I are about the same age. And even though I'm aging, I'm not old. And, and she taught me that. Um, uh, the, the crew that I ride with starts with that 11 year old Mia. I see her at almost every ride. And I was on our show yesterday. Yeah. I, I am the oldest in my crew and believe me, they let me know, but I, I, you know, I ride with women who are in their forties and their fifties. And then there's me, I'm approaching 60. Uh, but I'm not the oldest one at the endurance rides. There are, no, there actually, are endurance riders tend to, there are a lot of, the, into their 80s. Right? Yeah, they, yeah. and they are tough. Um, so even though I'm, I'm getting older, I'm much more adventurous and, and uh, trying new things than I was before I got the source. And I think also a valuable thing um, is my horse taught me I can still make friends. You know, as you get to be, an adult, usually you have your core group of friends uh, that I made when I was having kids or that I made in college and or that I have work acquaintances, but I've made some new friends. And that's un, that's unusual. And um, my horse, who you didn't ask me about, Glenn, by the way, her name is Ginger and she's a Morgan oh, mare. Oh, that's right. Sorry about that. That's OK. <laughs> um, she you know, she has taught me all that and given me these opportunities uh, to, to learn these lessons. Uh, she's a good teacher. Tara. Oh boy. That was a lot to follow up. That was well, well said. Yeah. Um, definitely humility. I, I know, of course, like I said, I've had Jaguar since he was an embryo and we've had a lot of ups and downs together. Um, Simon's constantly broken right now. So there's a lot of humility there. Uh, patience. I'm not a naturally patient person and you can't force things with horses. You, you really, you know, my mare's 10 years old this year 
and we've really started showing more in the last year and a half. And I don't feel like she was ready before that, even though, you know, in your, in my head, it's like, you know, she should be doing the six, seven year hunters. We should do be doing X, Y, or Z. And she just wasn't mentally there yet. Um, and for me also time management, um, I, I have a billion dogs and I've got three horses and nine goats and four cats and all that, you know, I have a zoo and I grew up with horses. So it's, I don't know what it's like to not have them at home. Really. I only didn't have horses at home for probably the four years I was in college. And then like three or four years after that. Um, but I did have a horse at college. So I just have always, you know, I have to get up at five 30 and I have to feed horses and I need to be ready. And I got to drive to work and I manage human resources for a fast growing consulting firm. And so there's a lot that goes into that that requires some malleability in scheduling and, you know, the horses have to eat twice a day. They need to get, you know, turn out all those things. And so I've really become pretty masterful with, with my calendar and with my time. We were talking about humans and resources people to get off on a little tangent here right now to, to be a human resources person in today's world. That's got to be a job. <laughs> My God, if there, it's just different. That there is something that's different than it was twenty, thirty years ago because of everything that's happened. It's just, but it's familiar. always been that way, Glenn. Because everything that we do is so impacted by what's happening in Washington D.C. and at the Supreme Court. You know, I've only worked in HR since two thousand and six, and I've gone through the you know. The FMLA had been around for a while, which is a leave of absence thing, and. Cobra had been, it was fairly new and the Affordable Care Act got passed. And, you know, every time some type of law goes through the Supreme Court that mandates something with healthcare or workers' rights, you know, you have to change that. Um, but I, I kind of going back to my topic, though, I think my career gives me a really delightful opportunity to talk to people about horse sports and what you can get out of riding and having horses. Because obviously it's, for me, it's a huge mental, you know, I deal with a lot of heavy stuff. You know, I fired a guy this week and, you know, I have people who have catastrophic illnesses and things like that happening. And the nice thing about getting on the back of a horse is you can't think about all that. Yeah, that's true. Alicia? Um, Man, Tara and Jennifer, took, you took all the good ones. No, um, <laughs> I would say definitely patience and like, I have only had my horse almost a year, actually, in a couple oh, yeah. weeks. Um, had horses when I was, like, in, you know, high school, and uh, we had a boarding facility and all that. But I catch road, exercise road, whatever, a million different horses over the past 11 years before I got my guy. And it was really fun and a great opportunity, but it also kind of knocked my confidence a little bit because you're like literally, Hey, it's Friday night. Do you want to Fox hunt this rando horse? You've never been on tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. And so every time I was riding horse, I was always kind of like doubting myself a little bit. And so I would say the biggest thing besides, well, I already said patience, but the biggest thing my horse has taught me in the last year is that I'm actually way better than I thought I was. I'm like, oh, I actually kind of know what I'm doing because I get to like take the time and like partner with one horse. And so it like really helps your confidence. And you're like, yeah, okay, like we've got this. This is good. And so that kind of helps him because I've got like nervous thoroughbred type horse. So like if he, if we're like, we got each other, it's all good. So it's, it's patience. And it's like, he's taught me I actually like kind of know what I'm doing a little bit. And then except I am always trotting on the wrong diagonal, but you know, like, <laughs> whatever. Um, and then also just to so appreciate having a horse and just being the opportunity that like, I can go out there and just smell his neck, have a ride and then like not worry about anything and just feel so grateful to be healthy enough to do that and have the financial, like be in the position to finally be able to do that. Um, just teaching you that like, you're really lucky if you get to own a horse or get to ride a horse or be around horses. So just kind of taking a step back and like being appreciative and you know it's hard and time a lot of time into them and money and strain on your relationship or whatever you have to get up but that it's teaches you that it's like a hundred percent totally worth it I wouldn't have it any other way you know i think i'm going to add 
you know, being around Scooter, who we got, what, eight years ago as a starving child who was about to die, and a hackney pony at that. Um, so, and I love ponies because they are a little ornery. Uh, I, I don't like boring horses, and apparently, I'm kind of that way with my hosts on the Horse Radio Network, if you think about it. Um, so, he taught me to be chill, that I had to be chill when I was there, and I'm not too good at being chill. Kind of like Tara that way a little bit, you know, and that's just not real good at being chill. So when I'm there, I have to be chill because he's he's a pony, <laughs> you know, he feeds on when you're not chill. Uh, so, you know, patience is an obvious one. I think we've all learned that. But I think more. And the other thing I learned and having dogs and Tara, you can you can vouch for this one. Anybody that's had a dog can vouch for this one. But I think it's it's more evident with horses because they're so much bigger is how forgiving they are is how forgiving really all animals are but but horses they're so forgiving and it's just exemplified because they're they're huge compared to a dog right and dogs are very forgiving but when your horse forgives you it seems different in a way i don't know why cats never forgive you so th that's not even a thing but you know but with your horse do you guys think that too that it's just yeah. so obvious when your horse does it right it's like, okay, he forgave me for being a jerk, you know, the day I was impatient or whatever, you know, it just, and they are, they're just, it, I, I love them for that. Well, and, like Jaguar uh, was the first horse I ever started that I ever was the first one to sit on him. And dear Lord, that's the very forgiving creature. <laughs> I was 15 years old, you know, he was two and yeah, there was a lot of firsts there that he was very patient for. <laughs> you cowboying around mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. trying not to break him yeah <laughs> yeah you're right you're right I, you know you do learn Jennifer you said it so well a lot of the things you've talked about I had never thought of before so thanks for bringing those to the table uh, that's the beauty of endurance when you're out there for four to six hours <laughs> you have time to think <laughs> you have a lot of time to think. <laughs> you also, I learned that, you know, all women, we're pretty good at multitasking. We kind of have to be. But there's a meme going around in the endurance community. Um, if you can't cry and post at the same time, you're not an endurance writer. Um, you have to be able to multitask. And um, I, I, can, I, I can cry and write at the same time. I have proved that. I know that. And it happens. But... I think riding a horse is the one time where I'm not multitasking. Like Tara was saying, um, I'm a nurse. I deal with transfusions. I go to the M&M uh, meetings where we talk about the death and mortality. It's, and it's, they're horrible stories. I'm a pediatric nurse. I don't think about those when I'm on the horse. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm doing or I'm crying because it hurts. So, you know, I don't, I don't multitask there. And, uh, you know, she, she gives me that opportunity. And I appreciate you, it. You got the horse when you were how old? Um, I started back riding when I was 54. I got her in 2018. So I was, what, 55? 56? Okay. So did did you being a pediatric nurse, did taking that home become, in other words, did, did that become easier not to take that home because you had the horse? Definitely. Um, I mean, I don't want to get too down. My, my no, husband yeah. and I, we yeah. lost our older son. Our older son died in the army. And um, this horse has saved my life. Uh, no doubt about it. She has taught me that um, it, it, there's still fun out there. There's still joy to be found. Um, and uh, that's a gift I can never repay her. And she has forgiven me a lot of times um, when I get lost on the trail. And she tries to tell me the right way and I ignore her, um, you know, and just learning to ride again. Uh, you know, she's taught me how to ride again, but also she's she's just given me some peace. Um, and that's that's invaluable. You truly have a therapy horse. I do. I do. She's wonderful. She she is a Morgan. And I my joke is that I showed her the description of a Morgan horse and she read it because she's that smart and said, OK, I can do that. <laughs> And and that's what she does. She is just as versatile and as good a family horse as you can find. And she loves endurance. You know, she'll she'll trot for six hours. Very good. Well, this was a good topic. Thanks for bringing it to the table. I really appreciate that. Uh, some more answers here on what people are giving up in the auditor room for having horses. 
and this ties into Tara's or to the last question to Jennifer's question too. My troubles when I'm at the barn they melt away. That's a good one. I like that Aww. one. Uh, and there's troubles <laughs> at the barn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the next one, I'm not going to say her name. I know exactly who she is, and I've, I've been at her place. Uh, currently, extra money in my bank account. <laughs> you know, that's true of all of us. Um, <laughs> now, Nikki, who does our WTF show for the Auditor Room. By the way, WTF is coming back. On the night of the 16th, we're doing WTF. Alicia doesn't know what that is yet. We'll tell you about that after the show. Uh, but that's an exclusive for the auditors, and I can't even say the name on this show. Um, but you it means exactly what WTF means. Uh, and Nikki is a, she's actually a counselor. So she actually does the important part of that show. Uh, we do the goofy part. Uh, she says she's given up her husband. <laughs> so she, she's still with him. Um, but obviously given up some time. I know Nikki, she's, she's, she's a lot of fun. And, and for all the auditors, WTF is back. So we'll be doing that. If you missed any part of this show and you want to go back and listen to it, you can find it on the stable scoop, uh, feed the audio version will be there of course all the video will be on any of the facebook pages this is currently on and i host horses in the morning it's the uh morning show for the horse world i'm there five well we're there five days a week i'm there three days a week with jamie and we have a lot of fun we actually talked about endurance with karen yesterday had the monthly endurance episode we have an 11 year old that just won the biltmore ride at 100 miles in the crappiest weather ever Matter of fact, what was it? There were like 60 entrants and all but uh, seven pulled out or something. It was crazy. Only, only four people finished. Uh, 50% of the people who started the 100 pulled. It was muddy. It was slippery. It was thundering. It was lightning. There were bears on the trail. One bear chased one of the riders. I mean, it was crazy. And, and Mia, won. the 11-year-old who apparently has no fear about anything in the world, who <laughs> also saw the bears, uh, won the race. <laughs> She went, they have to have sponsors at that age. They have to have somebody riding with them. So if they, you know, die in the trail, somebody knows where they are. Um, but she went through two that uh, that horses had to bail out at vet checks. And she have to, kept having to find these sponsors to ride with her. So, yeah, if you want to hear that, listen to Horses in the Morning, the endurance episode from yesterday. And today we had our Kira on, who's one of our spotlight riders in the Beyond the Ribbon series this year. She's 12 years old and a little eventer and a lot of fun to follow because she has a great little pony. So uh, you want to you want to take a listen to this morning's show as well. That's Horses in the Morning, all the shows on the Horse Radio Network can be found at horseradionetwork.com. Thank you guys for being on with us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you for being auditors and for being such supporters of the Horse Radio Network. We appreciate that too. Thanks. Thanks it was more fun than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, Jennifer. <laughs> that means she might come back. <laughs> well, let's not Thank go you, that Tara. Far. Thank Sorry you, Alicia. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye, everybody. We'll see bye, you next y'all. time. I'm off to Lexington tomorrow for the American Horse Publications, and thanks to them for being part of this show as well. Go and see all my friends there. <laughs>